Tomo News presents The Moon. This will be spectacular. A mega rare cosmic event is going to grace the sky at the end of this month. Regular lunation, the moon's orbit of the Earth, follows a 29 day cycle. This is why, in general, there is usually one full moon a month. The lunar eclipse on January 30th, 2018, will be extra special as it will be twinned with another lunar event. Blue moons occur when there are two full moons in a month, usually at the beginning and very end. On January 31st, the lunar eclipse at the end of January will coincide with a blue moon for the first time in 152 years. Much of Asia, Australasia, and Northwest America will get a quality view of the celestial event. Most of South America, Africa, and Western Europe will not be able to see it. The rest of the world will have a limited view based on their location. And no, the moon's not actually blue. The naming, according to Farmer's Almanac, may have carried over from the Old English bilu, which means to betray. This probably was in reference to how a blue moon betrays a standard lunation. Look who's going back to the moon. The Indian Space Research Organization has announced plans to send a rover to the moon early next year, nearly a decade after its first lunar journey met with mixed success. The spacecraft for India's Chandrayaan 2 moon mission is comprised of an orbiter, a lander, and a rover, which will first slingshot around Earth before going into lunar orbit. The lander will attempt a controlled or soft landing near the moon's south pole, while the orbiter travels around the moon. Once on the surface, the lander will take thermal measurements and deploy the six wheeled rover to explore the lunar terrain. Among the things the mission will pay close attention to are abrasive particles known as lunar dust, which pose a significant challenge to human colonization of the moon. The Chandrayaan 2 will be carried into space by the GSLV Mark II rocket and is scheduled to launch from an island in the Bay of Bengal in March 2018. India will carry out the final testing phase for the spacecraft in the coming weeks. The program's budget for the mission is relatively small, at only $93 million. Anybody up for some lunar cave diving? Scientists this week may have come across something that could lead to the first ever human outpost in space. A large and cavernous lava tube was this week confirmed to exist beneath the surface of the moon. These tubes are volcanic underground passages formed by flowing lava to funnel this substance. Once the flow stops, the tube remains with features similar to a cave. The discovery was made by a team of Japanese and American scientists who used data from the Selene and Grail spacecraft to acoustically map the enormous lava tube. The chasm is around 100 meters wide and 50 kilometers long and located in the Marius Hills region of the celestial body. It could provide shelter to astronauts during moon missions, protecting them from dangerous cosmic radiation. This could potentially allow for the development of a lunar exploration base. And that moon based Homo sapiens could very well lead to a human colony. Russia and the EU have set their sights on settling the moon. A future manned moon base will be one step closer if a planned joint EU Russia mission to place a lander on the moon's south pole succeeds. In five years, the European and Russian space agencies will land the Luna 27 probe on the edge of the moon's south pole Aitken basin. As parts of the south pole are shielded from the heat of the sun, the region is darker and colder than other areas of the moon. Scientists say that here, water is frozen and collected at the surface. The water could be used as a potential resource to support future human missions at this location. The European Space Agency hopes to build lunar habitats on the lunar south pole as early as 2024 and plans to deploy inflatable domes on the moon's surface as shelter for astronauts. 3D printing robots will build a layer of dirt around the domes. The ESA says the lunar base they hope to build within the next decade could replace the International Space Station as the new base for astronauts to experience life in space. Russia plans to build a permanent moon base by 2030. According to the Russian news agency TASS, the Kremlin plans to put a permanent base on the surface of the moon by 2030. Russia's eventual manned mission to the moon will involve the payload and the upper stage of the Angara A 5 V heavy lift carrier rocket. The rockets launched in pairs will all carry a piece of equipment essential to the moon mission. Each rocket can carry up to 700 tons. 
The first pair will carry a lunar lander and a lunar rocket stage to the moon. The second pair will carry another rocket stage along with an advanced crew transportation system. The third pair will carry another rocket stage along with a lunar base. Another component of the mission includes sending a lunar probe to the moon's surface. The probe will look for water deposits on the surface that can be used by a future human colony. Manned missions will begin orbiting the moon in 2028 and in 2030. Humans are expected to finally land on the moon and establish a permanent moon base there during that time. The first stage of the mission will cost around $185 million, with the two other stages costing even more. However, questions remain regarding how Russia will pay for the mission. Private company Moon Express wins U.S. permission for moon mission. The U.S. government has granted a Florida-based company permission to launch a mission to the moon. The first time the government has allowed a company to conduct a commercial space mission beyond Earth's orbit. Cape Canaveral-based Moon Express will fly its MX-1 lander to the moon. The MX-1 is about the size of a coffee table. It will be launched sometime in 2017 on an Electron rocket, a rocket currently being built by startup Rocket Lab. The MX-1 will carry a scientific and commercial payload that includes cremated human remains. It will also transmit pictures and videos of the moon back to Earth. The spacecraft is solar powered and uses hydrogen peroxide as rocket fuel. Its missions include mining for resources such as water and helium-3. It can also serve as a refueling station for other satellites. At the moment, commercial satellites have only gone as far as the geosynchronous orbit, about 22,000 miles above Earth. Only three nation states, the United States, the former Soviet Union, and China, have landed spacecraft on the moon. However, the permission granted to Moon Express does not guarantee access for other private companies to the moon. The company said its permission was a one-time deal and that all future requests will be reviewed case by case until new laws are passed. Water on the moon could fuel extended missions. Researchers at Brown University believe the moon's interior could be packed full of water. Water is found at the moon's poles, and scientists believe it exists there as a result of hydrogen brought by solar wind. However, according to a new study, magma eruptions from the moon's interior billions of years ago trapped water inside tiny beads of glass found in lunar rock. Satellite data collected by a lunar orbiter shows that these water-trapping glass beads are widespread on the moon's surface. Researchers have concluded that these water deposits are the result of magma that came from deep within the moon, meaning its interior must therefore contain water. Just how much water, however, is a question that no one can answer right now. But the researchers say future missions to the moon could potentially extract water from its surface, which would open the door to longer stays up there. New research reckons Earth birthed the moon. Ever wondered how the moon got up there? The most prominent lunar formation theory holds that the moon was formed when a Mars-sized object named Theia hit Earth billions of years ago. A cocktail of rock and metal erupted from both celestial bodies, mixing together to birth the moon. New research posits that a collision with something did occur, but instead created a giant donut-like spinning mass of vaporized rock called Synestia. Researchers believe the moon was fashioned inside this, potentially over hundreds of years by atmospheric pressure, extreme heat, and rock. And then it just sort of popped out. China eyeing never-before-attempted moon landing. Beijing is reportedly planning a mission to the dark side of the moon this calendar year. The first part of China's Chang'e 4 lunar mission this year will see the PRC attempt to station a satellite some 60,000 kilometers over the dark side of the moon. Landing on the far side of the moon is difficult because it is not within view of Earth, so radio communication is impossible. The next part of the mission will see China use the satellite to navigate and land an unmanned spacecraft on the far side of the moon, something never attempted before. Do you think China will succeed? Three moons for the price of one. If lunar cosmic events are on your bucket list, listen up. NASA says Earth is in for a lunar trifecta of a super blue blood moon on January 31st, 2018. Lunar orbit of Earth follows a 29-day cycle. The blue moon, like the one on January 31st, occurs when there are two full moons in a calendar month. 
The moon will also be closer to the Earth during this time, meaning that it will be brighter than normal. This is called the supermoon. When the moon passes through the Earth's shadow during the January 31st lunar eclipse, it will appear red. This is also known as a blood moon. Much of South America, Africa, and West Europe will not be able to see the cosmic event, while most of Asia, Australasia, and the Northwestern America will. The rest of the world may be able to see it partially, depending on their location. According to time, the last total lunar eclipse to coincide with a blue moon was in 1982.